<sighs> I just have something I want to share with you guys. Um, a couple years ago, in 2020, which it just doesn't feel like it could be two years, but it's it's been over two years. I was sitting in my duplex in the St. John's neighborhood that many of you have heard about. And I was looking at the Word of God in my amplified version. And I opened up in Isaiah chapter 43. And this verse just really jumped off the page to me. It was just in bold lettering. It was highlighted. It was glowing. And it says right here, Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. Do not earnestly remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it, and will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. When I read that, I wrote down the date, which is August 10th, 2020. I wrote that right in the Bible. And, you know, I read that, and I read that, and I read that, and I read that. I read it over and over for months. I would open up the Bible because I put one of those little um, page, you know, those little page markers on the, on the page or the sticky things. And I would open it up and I would read it, you know, and I would open it up and I would read it. And I just, I kept saying, okay, God, that is a promise. That is a promise that you're making to me. And you know, I was sitting here tonight and I had um, a, a really good fellowship time online with some Christians. Um, uh, the one couple I met when I was in my late 20s and I have not seen them since my late 20s. And God miraculously reconnected me with this, this couple and they are involved in this church where they live. Um, they live in Missouri. And the, the lady and I, um, we just, it's almost like we started where we left off. And that was a long time ago. And so she invited me to her pastor's teaching on Wednesday nights um, through the internet, you know, through online. And so I got on there and I just found myself so connected and so engaged in the conversation. Um, we were talking about what it means to be born again. And we were talking about um, John chapter 3 and, you know, how when somebody becomes a Christian, their spirit is born again. When we're born, we're born one time, right? We're born one time through the mother that God chose for us. But when we're born again, our spirit is made alive. Our spirit is made alive. Before you're born again, your spirit is dead. It's dead in sins. It's dead in trespasses. All these all this sin, which is against God, it separates us from God. Our sin separates us from God. When Jesus Christ came to the earth in the form of a baby and lived a sinless life, chose and was ordained to die on a cross and to take the sin of the whole world, past, present, and future, upon himself. That was the, the new and living way for us to become born again. So when you're born again, you are made new. Your spirit is made alive. Not only that, but the very Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, comes to live inside of you. When Jesus rose from the dead, when he rose 
from the dead after his crucifixion. He was on the earth and revealed himself to his disciples for a short period of time. And then he left. He told them for many, many um, you know, years, the years that he was with his disciples. And it wasn't as many years as I said, but he told them that he was going to die, rise again, and go back to be with his father. They didn't understand that. When he revealed himself after he rose from the dead, he, um, at some point, it was time for him to leave. And they, you know, when, when he left, they were, they were sad, but two angels, two messengers from heaven reminded them to, to remember what he said, that he would come back again and he would, he was going to come back and get his church from this earth at some point. Um, so when I was reading this scripture, do not earnestly remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. For behold, I am doing a new thing. It springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed to it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Well, I came here tonight to tell you that God does make a way through the wilderness and he does bring rivers to the desert. He brings rivers to the desert of your life, of, to your heart, to your experience on this, you know, on this earth. We go through periods of time, whether you're a Christian or not, you go through periods of time in your life where you feel like you're in a wilderness, where you feel like you're in a desert. But if you are a follower of God, if you are one of his, then he will make a way in your wilderness and he will bring rivers to the desert, to the desert of your heart. You know, he likens our heart to a garden. He talks about this in his word and he talks about how our heart is like a garden and he's the gardener. And he talks about our heart like it, it's soil, you know, and what is planted in our heart is what is going to grow, is going to manifest in our life. You know, we can manifest bitterness. We can manifest hatred. We can manifest love. We can manifest forgiveness. We all manifest different things. Um, you know, when somebody hurts you or offends you or wounds you, that is something that goes into the garden of your heart. It goes in there and depending on how long it stays and how long it's cultivated and, and it goes down in there and it starts growing roots, it's going to manifest different things. You know, it's going to manifest, it could manifest anger. It could manifest in depression, resentment, um, gossip, um, you know, bitterness. These are the different things that happen when we go through wounds and hurts with people. Well, what God is doing in my life, and the reason I say all that is because God is going into the garden of my heart and he is recultivating and softening and you know healing and he's making the ground soft it's like when you take a rototiller to a garden and you dig up that ground you get all of the dirt really soft and really fluffy and ready for those seeds you know after you put those seeds in what do you do next do you just go inside and forget about it? No. No, you don't. You have to go back out there and you have to what? Pull weeds. 
I mean, even if you put that blanket of plastic down and you put those seeds in there, you know, you still have to go out there and you still have to reposition that stuff and you have to pull those weeds and you have to cultivate. You have to keep cultivating the ground. That's how our heart is, you know. And when God said this to me and he said, do you not perceive and know and will you not give heed to it that I'm doing a new thing, that I will make a way in the wilderness and I will put rivers in the desert. God was telling me that that's what he was going to do in my life. And, you know, that was in 2020. And, you know, I'm starting to see a little bit of that. I'm starting to see those rivers. I'm starting to see that way in the wilderness. I'm starting to see that he's making a way. Now, he said, I'm, I'll make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Meaning that even before you come out of the wilderness, even before you come out of the desert, God is making a way in it. You can't get out of it till you go through it. Listen to that again. You can't get out of it until you go through it. You have to go through something in order to get somewhere else. You know, I remember when I lived in Pittsburgh as a teenager, I used to hang out with this friend named Maria, and we would go out and have a lot of fun. And I remember we had to drive through these tunnels in Pittsburgh, and they were called the Squirrel Hill Tunnels. And we would always drive through those to go wherever we were going. But we couldn't get where we were going unless we went through those tunnels. We had to go through them to get to the other side. Well, that's kind of how the wilderness is in our life, you know? We can't get to the other side unless we go through the wilderness. But God says here that he will make a way in the wilderness and he will put rivers in the desert. Do you think the desert is in the wilderness? Yes, it definitely is. You know, there's a lot of terrain on the earth. There's wilderness where you don't see, you know, you don't see any buildings, you don't see any people, you don't see anything except weeds and brush and, you know, things. But then there's desert. Desert is a little bit different. Desert is usually, you know, lacking in rain. Um, desert You'll, you'll see cactus, you know, you'll see tumbleweeds, you'll see a lot of flat ground, not a lot of scenery. You know, everything is kind of dry in the desert. But God is saying that he will make a way in the wilderness and he will put rivers, rivers in the desert. So that was God's promise to me in 2020. Now I want to share another scripture with you, and it's in Isaiah. Isaiah is a wonderful book. And if you turn to Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah chapter 40, there, there is a beautiful scripture at the very end of, of Isaiah chapter 40. Um, you know, God is, is a God of his word. He is a God that has made hundreds and hundreds of proclamations in his word, hundreds of promises, and he keeps his word. But the thing about God is he doesn't do things on our timetable. He doesn't do things on our timetable. He does things the right way. If he did them on our timetable, they would not be the right way. So, about halfway through Isaiah 40, and I'm trying to get this page to turn, you know, he talks about how, you know, Israel was, was weary, Israel was frustrated, Israel, the people of Israel that God brought out of slavery, all through the Old Testament, we hear about these people. We hear about how they are faithful to him, and then they're not. Then they're crying out to him, and then they're not. You know, they're asking for forgiveness, and then they're out there and they're sinning again. Does that sound familiar? You know, so 
you know, he talks, he's talking to them and he's telling them to lift their eyes up to him. That, you know, he created them and that he calls them all by name. You know, God knows your name. He knows your name and he knit you together miraculously in your mother's womb. Birth is a miracle. The process of a baby growing in a womb is a miracle. And God created you and he knows your name. So it says here, you know, hast thou not known and hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint and neither is weary? Do you feel weary? Do you go through weariness? I know I do. I get very weary. I get very exhausted. Right now I'm starting to feel a little exhausted. Um, you know, my strength is very temporary. My strength is very temporary, but God's strength is eternal and he never gets tired, you know. So it says right here, there is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint. And to them who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. Imagine that. The youths will faint and be weary. You know, I know a lot of youths that feel very faint and very weary these days. And I remember when I was a little bit younger that, you know, I just never saw young people that were tired. But, you know, young people are pretty tired these days, just like us that are older. This world, this world will make you tired. And then it says, the young men shall utterly fall. The young men shall utterly fall. That just shows you that there isn't anybody on this earth that has it all together. There isn't anybody on this earth who doesn't feel weary and doesn't fall and doesn't faint and doesn't get exhausted. But, verse 31 says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. You know, when God makes a promise to you and, or he gives you a verse that means a lot to you, write it down, highlight it, put a sticky note beside it in your Bible, write it in your journal. Don't forget it because God will fulfill those promises in your life. I promise you that because God doesn't lie. That's the only reason that I can say that is because God does not lie. He keeps all of his promises. Now, I want to say that there are times that we get weary. There are times that we feel like fainting. There are times that we are exhausted and we don't think that we're ever going to see the end of this tunnel that we're in. You know, we're in this tunnel and we're, we feel like we're never going to see the light at the end of that tunnel. But I want to let you know that you will, because God said you will. God said that you will be strengthened. You will mount up with wings like eagles. An eagle is a majestic, huge, mighty bird. An eagle glides in the air. It doesn't flap its wings, struggling to get from here and there. Eagles glide in the air. Eagles rise up. They rise up in the air and they glide through the air. You know, where I'm living, um, I can look out the window of my little office and I can see these. I don't think they're eagles, but they're like hawks. But they look like eagles to me. And they just glide. They glide all around in this circular motion up in the air. And God says that they 
that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. So what does waiting look like to you? Waiting to me means patiently trusting that he will answer my prayers, that he will hear the cry of my heart, that you know he will deliver me from my enemies. He will deliver me from my burdens and he will make me more like him. That is the cry of my heart is to be more like Jesus. The cry of my heart is to look and act and speak like my father. I want to be like him. I, I want my character to be like that of my heavenly father. And so I believe that as I wait on him and as I go through these trials and I go through the wilderness and I go through the desert, that he is making me like him. So that is what I wanted to tell you tonight. And I hope that something I shared encouraged you, blessed you, and gave you hope. I will see you the next time. Thank you so much for being here. Bye-bye.